Hello from West End, Toronto. Welcome to Stay at Home Cinema, brought to you by Tiff and Crave. We're streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and at tiff.net slash stay at home. I'm Cameron Bailey, the artistic director and co head of Tiff, and tonight we're spending some time with a legend. The film is Falls Around Her, and we'll press play at 7 30 p.m. Eastern. Our guest is the film star, Tantu Cardinal. First, some shout outs. Shout out to all of the frontline workers who are keeping us safe healthy and fed. To our donors and members, uh, you're keeping us going. Thank you very much uh, from all of us at TIFF. Shout out to all levels of government, the government of Canada, the province of Ontario, and the city of Toronto, who support TIFF all year round. And a big shout out to our corporate partners, including our lead sponsor, Bell, and our major sponsors, RBC, Royal Paris, and Visa. I'm speaking to you, as I always do, from Indigenous land, and I want to shout out all Indigenous storytellers from coast to coast to coast. I'm so glad we get to revisit Falls Around Her tonight by the Anishinaabe writer-director Darlene Ponce, which premiered at our festival in 2018. Darlene's film deals with some crucial themes, including ownership of the land, of natural resources, and of stories. So as we prepare to watch this film, take a moment to think about the land that you are on. Find out who the traditional keepers of your land, uh, the land that you're on, are. What's the treaty relationship, or is it unceded territory? Here in Toronto, we're in the Dish with One Spoon territory. It's the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron It's also the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of Credit First Nation, and it's home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Metis people. I want to thank tonight's community partner, the Imaginative Film and Media Arts Festival. That the world's, is the world's largest presenter of Indigenous screen content. Imaginative is an important partner festival to working on events with us throughout the year. Thanks to Imaginative for putting the word out about tonight's event, and we'll be welcoming questions from their members during tonight's Q&A. You know, we've watched Tantu Cardinal in films and TV and on the stage for many years. Maybe she'll tell you how many. On the big screen, she played Black Shawl in Kevin Costner's Dance of the Wolves. She was in Black Robe. Legends of the Fall and Blue River, and an award winner in Anne Wheeler's film Loyal. On the small screen, she's been in series from Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, to Westworld, uh, and she is a Korean Metis and also been an early vocal advocate of Indigenous storytelling, appearing in landmark films like Smoke Signals and TV shows like Marcus and Flats. She has won countless awards for her acting and her activism on behalf of Indigenous people and the environment. That includes the Order of Canada, the 2018 Burke's Diamond Tribute to the year's women in film for her work as the Canadian actress, presented by TIFF's official jewelry sponsor, Burke's, and Telephone Canada. But tonight's film, Falls Around Her, marks the first time she's taken the lead role in the film. I'm going to ask her right now. Tantu Cardinal, welcome to Stay at Home Cinema. Thank you. How, Thank you, Cameron. Yeah, no, welcome. Thanks, and good to see you. How is your lockdown going? It's, I think it's going really great. Um, it's, a, it's a very safe place. I'm right on the ground floor. I'm not in an apartment building where there's a lot of people going in and out. And, and so it's really, it's really comfortable and it's really safe. Nice. Just off the sunset about um, three quarters of a block. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's quiet. That's it's great. Quiet. I, th I see like a glimpse of a what well, looks like a piece of art behind you. Is is that uh, an artwork? Yes. Oh, this yeah. is a shawl uh -huh. that was awarded to me. It was um, Jolie Proudfit, who was, she, she curates a film festival in uh, uh, San, Palm Springs, San Diego, wherever she puts it on. And anyway, mm -hmm. she, she, I wish I could get a good shot of it. She <laughs> Yeah, she got this artwork and got it put on this show and uh, presented it to me. Oh, looks so, beautiful. She was celebrating women in film. Nice. Uh, yeah. Makes for, oh. makes for a great backdrop. Um, I want to begin by asking about this particular moment in your career. Because it really does feel like it's been, you know, you've been going for so many years, but you're at your peak right now, it feels like. And when you look back at what you've achieved so far and forward to the projects ahead of you, including the, the series you're working on, Stumptown, how does it feel to you? You know, it feels like 
When I stepped into doing this work back in 70, 71, and, and then I look back on, on the trail and how I traveled and, and what I had to do to survive um, and my passion. It was a purpose that I had. And, and the purpose is to get the truth of who we are out into the air. I wanted the Canadian public to understand they did not understand who we are and that I wanted our truths to be brought forward and come forward. So that's what I tried to do and in and, um, and the work that I got, and which was not much. It was not substantial, maybe a couple of jobs a year or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I always um, made myself available so that I would be able, if any acting came up, I, I had to be able to go and do it. So I could not tie myself into a commitment um, that I could leave because I was committed to this purpose, to this passion. So it's kind of interesting to have this time of lull, you know, to this whole still and to look back over where I've been. And now here I am in Hollywood and the place shut down as soon as I get here. <laughs> and, um, but in, in a, it's such a good feeling because I feel like um, I have accomplished, you know, something major in terms of my own, mm -hmm. my own needs mm -hmm. to do, you know, because I spent all those years doing this and that and, and really trying to convince filmmakers that we can act, you know. We yeah, act. The filmmakers of that. When I first started, it was just standard knowledge that we as Indigenous people were not in touch with our feelings. Really? Yes. And so that was 70, 71, 68, 69. You know, those were kind of dark ages. Eh? Mm -hmm. And really in terms of what the Canadian public knew about who we were. You know, and it was really hard to convince anybody of anything different. So it had to be very slow and there was no Wi-Fi. There was no, none of this kind of communication going on. It was very small. So any, any changes that you wanted to make, I felt that it was always working with the filmmakers themselves that any changes could be brought forward. You know, uh, there's, there's sort of like this minimum place for women anyway mm -hmm. in the minimum place that there is for indigenous and um so it, it had to be very careful treading uh, in terms of being allowed in with a new idea and mm -hmm. something that was so set and yet in in some films from the 80s and 90s you had such memorable supporting roles I'm thinking of Loyalties, uh, Ann Wheeler's film uh, with De uh, Kevin Costner in Dances with Wolves and, and others as well. Um, there may not have been the biggest role in the movie, but you really left your mark. Was that something that you had to, to fight to, to achieve? Uh, by, by the time Dances with Wolves came along, they, they had a sense of what my work mm -hmm. could be, you know, and, and Kevin, uh, by the time we got to shooting, it was just go do, you know? So I had, I had a certain amount of freedom and, uh, always, you know, always when you look back over a project, you always say, okay, wow, I could have done better there. could have done this there and all of this kind of stuff. But, um, you just kind of have to have the faith that what you're doing is, what you can do and what you're meant to do in that that moment because it all folds forward it all moves forward to whatever the next um the next step or the next moment mm -hmm. is. i want to ask about falls around her because this was a project that i understand was written by darlene napons for you specifically yeah. how did that happen sorry how did that happen um, well, I was working on another movie that she was shooting, uh, Every Emotion Costs, and it was, um, I, I guess, a support role. And the thought occurred to her, 
you know, why, why, it, why don't we do a story with her playing in the lead? Because she felt mm -hmm. that I had power and um, and energy, and she wanted to. I mean, I, I put words in her mouth, but she wanted to. Uh, you know, it, it, it occurred to her, why isn't this happening? And you know, takes a woman, indigenous woman, to recognize that, you know, maybe uh, maybe there wasn't a lot of work because the work wasn't there. It's, you know, and, and for my side of it, it was, it was kind of um, uh, a goal, you know, a bucket list kind of thing that, can I carry a movie? Mm -hmm. I carry a movie i can handle a movie and it you know and a part of this long long trail that i've had is the is the great frustration that the characters that i was representing had so much more to contribute to this story mm -hmm. but uh this is all that we were being asked to contribute so it was it was a real joy um to have the opportunity to work with darlene and and do this story and and to have Tina and Gail as my sisters and and the community, uh, it was heaven. It really was. Can I ask a little bit about your process? You've been acting for so many years now. How do you work up a character? And in this case, where you're the lead character, the story really is all about your character, Mary. How do you build that character? Do you work from the outside, from external things in, or from the inside out, or a mix? I always, I always um, go from the inside, hmm. inside out, mm -hmm. and um, start with her, her spirit, her energy, her, her soul, and and try to to see her, the experiences that she had and the background that she she comes with, and and what is this moment? What was going on? inside and how long had it been going on these kinds of things um to to set in my character and try to set as much um knowables into my character so that when we're we're actually in the moment of things that i can trust her intuitively hmm. and the character does have a secret there's a mystery around mary that we really don't discover much about until the very end of the film, and, and that must be uh, something you have to calibrate as well, so you're not revealing too much too soon. Right, yes. And it helped that um, I had to do it on my own because, and I really felt like there, there wasn't anything that I could say, explain, or contain. Um, you know, I couldn't share it with my nosy sister. Mm, yeah. um, because I, I didn't trust her lips. And this is definitely something that I had to handle. Mm -hmm. I had to deal with. It's my stuff. I'm not going to bring anybody else in. You, know? uh, you, you mentioned uh, your sister is played by Tina Keeper in the movie. There's a question from one of the imaginative members I want to ask, which is, what's it like to have Tina Keeper as a sister? I love it. <laughs> she's my sister anyway. I adopted her a long time ago. We adopted each other many, many years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you so, go back a long way. Huh? You go back a long way with Tina. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, north of 60. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because um, I, I, I was reading for that role and um, I... Mm, I was kind of afraid of, of series. And those oh, things. really? Why? Yeah. Because I really wanted to the opportunity to explore. There was more and more characters that were coming forward. It was more complexities. And um, I really didn't want to be stuck in like a six-year agreement. Mm. I couldn't hardly make a, you know, a two-week agreement in <laughs> many ways, you know? So, um, uh, the, you know, there was different elements that were involved. And uh, I had just got a movie, a very independent little film in Vermont, and I just loved the character. I just had to go do her. I had to go do her. And then I thought, well, you know, what's after this? I wanted variety. I wanted to be able to move. And, uh, and then and, and I met Tina. 
in it. Mm. And I'm so grateful um, because I thought, wow, that was a lot of work to carry that series. Yeah. Just did such an amazing job. And I, I really trust her instincts and her intellect and her heart. And uh, she's truly, she comes from our world. You know, she didn't, she didn't have to pretend to be where she's from. Right. That's <laughs> you know? important. Yeah. I've got another question here from a TIFF member who says, you're sharing part of yourself with us on screen. What do you want your viewers to take away from that experience? That um, that there's more to our people. You know, I'm hoping, what I really like, hope to do um, with my characters is, uh, especially for people who kind of have us categorized or have us in a, in a little slice place or uh, the dreaded term that I just hate, stereotyping. Mm. You know, uh, I don't even know what that is. Um, and uh, I got a letter while I was here in this uh, isolation that really described what kept me going in those years of sparsity in terms of characters and opportunities mm -hmm. uh, as an actor, as a storyteller or any of it. Uh, I would have to have created a whole industry to be able to, to go out of it, but I made the choice to work within uh, a certain parameter to kind of move my way through our societies, you know, to, to, because it's important that what we call the majority society knows more about us, knows who we are to some degree, because there's so much um, misinformation, you know, maligning of character and for political reasons, for all kinds of reasons that are tied to the land and try to nationhood and, and all kinds of stuff. So, mm -hmm. uh. I have a question here from uh, Isla Garamani, who asks you, what indigenous films, books, or music are you consuming while we're all staying at home? I am not doing any of that. I <laughs> am creating a one more video. I am creating a, a place of learning. Uh, I'm doing, I'm doing things. Uh, I'm, I have a hard time, I'm, but you know, I'm in the States. Where do we find our filmmakers? Mm. Where do we see our filmmakers work? I went to this film festival and I saw films that I've been wanting to see. I saw uh, Blood Quantum. I saw, um, I can't even think of what the titles of them were. But we've got some wonderful filmmakers happening. We've got some great storytellers going on. We've got some great talent on screen, behind the screen, and and yeah, a very lot of uh, young filmmakers coming up, Elamaya Tailfeathers and Dennis Goulet and so many others who are also just you know straddling the border because it doesn't really matter that much between Canada and the U.S. You work where where you feel is right. Um, yeah, where do we see our stuff? That's the thing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, well, we try to do our bit. Yeah. Um, last question I want to ask, Tantu. You've had to fight to stay in this industry. You talked a little bit about, about it just now, but you had to fight to just push to get the stories that you want to see on screen. And I wonder, because it has been a fight for so many years, what has kept you going? What's kept that fire in you? When I would hear from the people, oh, okay. when the woman who saw me just, she just threw herself at me because of how she could encourage her two daughters to go ahead into the industry, go ahead and be an actor. And the other one wanted to be a journalist, a television journalist. And she said, because you're doing what you're doing, I can just tell them, go ahead, my girl. And at that, and then I got a letter um, from uh, a guy who was telling me that when he was um, a, a young boy, he and his brother and his mother were in a city and they had none of their culture around. 
this I'm talking about those dark ages that I was mentioning earlier. Mm -hmm. And she said, he said she would look for anything Indian because they were the only two brown kids in the school and they were getting bullied and they were getting harassed. And she, single mom, was there trying to bolster their pride and trying to give them something in this this dark city. Mm -hmm. And um, and she and he said she would find you in something. Oh. And she yeah. would. You know, I mean, those of us who were on screen at that time, but there weren't very many women around. There, there, there's one, not a place for us. Mm -hmm. Not a place for us, right? And um, and so I, I just felt like, ah, okay, yes. That's why you That's do it. True. That's true. I was there with the the families when there was hardly anything around. There was no posters for the walls. There was none of this merchandising. There was, our filmmakers weren't there yet. Mm -hmm. We were working with the non-Indigenous filmmakers who were kind of opening up to our stories. And, and so I, it just gave me a great sense of peace to get that letter. And he wanted a picture with a photograph and you betcha. <laughs> well, you that. You said that back. <laughs> yeah. you, I'm, I'm so glad you did keep fighting uh, for everyone. And um, I, I want to thank you for uh, being with us this evening. We're going to go to Falls Around Her. We're going to press play 7.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 4.30 on the West Coast across Canada. We're watching on the Crave. If you're not in Canada, find it wherever you can and join us. We're going to be tweeting along as we watch Tentu Cardinal in Falls Around Her. We use the hashtag TIFF at home. Tentu Cardinal, thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cameron, and, and all of your crowd. Thank you. <laughs>